Hello and welcome to this online lesson. My name is Mr. Hoven and today we're going to be looking at the growth of big business. As you can see in the picture, what up? Big business was large and in charge and ready. Now, one of the things that we've already mentioned before earlier in the unit was the idea of laissez-faire economics. And this was something that played a huge part in not just the railroads expanding, but also played a big part in the expansion of all big business and companies throughout the later half of the 19th century. As America industrialized, the government decided that the best way to help businesses would be to leave them alone. Not going to touch them, not going to try to help them, not going to regulate them, just leave them alone. This policy is known as laissez-faire. Two other terms used to describe this policy of economics are free enterprise and capitalism. Basically, businesses are free to do as they wish without control or regulation of the government. And this trend continued until the late 1920s when the stock market crashed, which began the Great Depression. Now, another factor that allowed big businesses to grow was the idea of individuals who took a risk, a financial risk, in order to hopefully invest in a business that would make them a lot of money or invest in a company that would make them very rich. And these people were known as entrepreneurs, people, persons who take a financial risk to create and run a company. A number of entrepreneurs or wealthy businessmen took advantage of laissez-faire. Without control of the government, they had total control over the wages they paid their workers, how long the hours that workers worked every day, the safety conditions in the factories, breaks and vacation workers got, prices in which they charged for their products, and mergers, how companies would come together. Now, the first of these great entrepreneurs was a man known as Andrew Carnegie. He was a Scottish immigrant, and he formed this Carnegie Steel Company and eventually earned billions of dollars. Often, he gave a lot of his money to build libraries and help charities. So he was a well-respected entrepreneur and industrialist. Another individual that we're going to spend some time looking at in class is John Rockefeller. He formed the Standard Oil Company. He took advantage of the fact that his resource was in demand for machines and later the automobile. And he took strong advantage of the laissez-faire economics and the laissez-faire system. He was very good at forcing other companies out of business or merging with other companies at his own benefit. A third individual we're going to do some more investigating into was J.P. Morgan. He was a wealthy banker who used his profits to, in banking. Again, that whole idea of an entrepreneur investing in something else, profits from banking to control most of the nation's rail lines. And he, he made a fortune doing that. And the final industrialist that we're going to look at is Cornelius Vanderbilt. And he earned millions owning steamship lines. And he later bought up most of the Northeastern rail lines. So again, he invested. He took a financial risk in the hopes of it turning a huge profit for him. Now, these four individuals will be classified as either robber barons or captains of industry. And as you learn more about them in class, you may think they belong in both categories. But a robber baron is a title given to individuals that took advantage of or robbed the poor to build their own fortunes. A captain of industry is almost the flip of that. A title given to individuals who engage in philanthropic acts to help those in need. Basically, a philanthropic person is a philanthropist. Someone that gives money to charity, gives money or aid to people in need. And again, these individuals will fit into one or both of these categories. That's what we're going to continue to look at in class and as we look more at the big businesses and big business practices. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.